and welcome back to the Cracking Titan YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 207, course schedule. Before we get into the question prompt, you guys know the drill. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps me grow. All right. There are a total of num courses you have to take, labeled from 0 to num courses minus 1. You are given an array prerequisites where prerequisites of i equals a of i b of i, which indicates that you must take course b of i before you take course a of i. For example, the pair 0, 1 indicates that in order to take course 0, you have to first take course 1. We want to return true if you can finish all of the courses, otherwise we want to return false. Now let's look at two very basic examples before we talk about how we're actually going to solve this question. So we have uh, two courses here, and here's the prerequisites array. So in order to take course zero, we have to take, uh, sorry, in order to take course one, we have to have completed course zero, right? So the order we would take it is course zero, and then course one, and we're done. Cool, simple. What about this one, where in order to take course one, we need to have completed course zero, but in order to complete course zero, we need to complete course one, which means that we now have, you know, a cycle, right? And obviously, this is an infinite cycle, and we're never going to get out of this. Therefore, we cannot take this um, schedule because it just doesn't work, right? This is an infinite cycle. So this is one thing that we have to worry about. Now, you know, these examples are quite basic, but they don't really tell us how to actually solve it. You know, we could do this on a piece of paper easily, but how do we write an algorithm for this? So that's what we're going to talk about now. So we read the question prompt, and we looked at two basic examples, but they weren't quite good for actually showing us how we're going to solve this question. So let's look at a little bit more of a complex example. <clears throat> so we have four courses here, and these are the prerequisites. So let's build our kind of course dependency graph. So in order to take course one, we have to take course zero. In order to take course two, we have to take course one. And in order to take course two, we also need to take course zero. And in order to take course three, we need to take course two. So this is what our graph would essentially look like. So now what we want to do is basically we need to figure out whether or not we can, you know, take all the courses. And, you know, this seems like a simple DFS, you know, can we get to basically all the courses, right? The way that we want to solve this question is going to be with something called a topological sort. And if you don't know what that is, I would highly recommend you pause the video and go watch Tashar Roy's video on topological sort, and it will teach you the basics of what you need to know for topological sort. This is how I learned it, and it's a really good video. It's about 10 minutes, and it'll basically just walk you through it super simple. To recap uh, what a topological sort is, essentially, given a node, it is a sorted ordering of basically you know, the nodes in the, in the graph, such that the children of a node always come before the parent of a node in the ordering. Now, for this question, we don't actually care about the ordering. So you're probably wondering why are we solving it with a topological sort when it seems like a DFS will work? Well, first of all, a topological sort is a DFS. Second of all, there is actually a follow up question to this uh, problem called course schedule two, where we actually want the order that we can complete the courses in. So instead of you having to learn two algorithms, one for this problem and one for the follow up, why not just learn topological sort that you can apply to both of them because the code is literally the same, except for in this question, we're basically just returning true or false, whereas in the other one, we're returning the order. So in this question, we can actually just ignore the order, but solve it the same way. So if you get either of these questions, you know which one to do, and it's much easier to learn one algorithm than two of them. So essentially what we want to do is the first thing that we want to do is just build our graph, right? We need to take our adjacent, well, we need to take this list of lists and we need to build a graph, right? So build, um, build graph, right? Where our graph, our key, is going to be a course and then the value is going to be a list of all the prerequisites right so pre rec one dot 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 you know all the prerequisites for that course and we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the graph so we're going to build it out then what we're going to do is we just want to traverse <clears throat> starting from you know any point in our graph and we just want to basically explore all of the children um, of that graph and see how many courses we can visit, right? 
and we're essentially just going to keep track of all the courses that we visited um, you know from this course right so from a course we're going to check that we can actually get to all the prerequisites from there and we're just going to try to backtrack and we're going to keep track of all the visited um, you know courses that we've done right and at the end what we want to do is we essentially just want to make sure that our visited set equals the amount of courses that um, is here if we are able to visit every single course <clears throat> then that means that uh, we don't have any issues with our graph and there's no kind of there's no cycles that's one thing that we have to watch out for if you remember from the original example um, cycles will screw us up um, and then we just need to be able to visit every single course like it could be the case that a course just isn't um, visitable and therefore you can't take it so what we need to do is we just need to make sure that we can you know visit all the courses so we just want to check that our DFS can actually check uh, can actually just touch every single node so that's essentially what we're gonna do but we're gonna use it uh, do it in a topological sort manner just because we can apply the code um, to course schedule 2 and another question called alien dictionary which can actually be solved in the exact same way so three questions for one algorithm that's basically the same code sounds like a perfect combination to me so hopefully this part wasn't too confusing what we want to do now is actually go to the code editor and I'll walk you through it line by line I understand that this part can be a little bit confusing drawing it out is like a huge mess instead let's actually just walk through the code line by line and it should be a lot clearer uh, for you to just listen and watch me code and as opposed to me trying to draw this out and it's just gonna be horrendous uh, so let's go to the code editor that's enough blabbing we are back in the code editor let's type this up the first thing I want to check is actually that prerequisites is not empty if it's empty that means that there's no prerequisites therefore we don't have to worry about um, not being able to take courses so we can just return true off the bat so we're gonna say if not prerequisites then we can simply return true all right excellent now we need to build our graph and remember that the key of our graph is going to be a course and the values for that key are going to be all of the prerequisites that we need to take before actually being able to enroll in the course so we're going to say self.graph is going to be collections.defaultdict and it's going to be a list. Now what we want to do is we want to actually build the <coughs> we want to build the graph. So we're going to say for course uh, prereq in prerequisites we want to essentially say self.graph for a given course we want to append the prereq to it, right? Simple enough. Now what we need to do is we typically do a three set approach for solving a topological sort problem. So there's three sets and let's define them and talk about each one. So the white set and we're going to initialize it to all of the keys of our graph. So self.graph.keys. Uh, we're going to have a gray set which is going to be empty and we're going to have a black set which is also going to be empty. Now let's talk about what each one of these sets represents. So the white set represents all of the values that we still need to process. So basically you can think of this as a kind of like our work queue. This is the you know, number of nodes that we need to process in our graph. The gray set is going to be all of the nodes that we're currently processing. Remember that in this step first search, we get to a node and then we want to fully explore its children. Now, what happens when somewhere along the dependency chain of its children, you actually end up at the node that you started your search from? That would indicate a cycle, and this is what the gray set aims to prevent. When we're processing a node, we're gonna put it in the gray set, and if somehow down the line in the DFS, we actually end up at that node again, then that means that we have a cycle and therefore we simply exit out because this problem is not solvable we have a cycle the black set is going to represent all of the nodes that we have fully visited and when we say fully visited we mean that we have visited it and all of its children fully so if we ever get back to a node that's currently in the black set we can simply just you know stop the search there and move on to the next value because it's already been fully explored there's no reason to do it twice <clears throat> so those are your three sets now we need to process all of the nodes in the white set. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's now process the white set. So we're gonna say while white, so while we have something in the white set to process, we want to get a course out of it. So we're gonna say course 
is going to equal to white dot pop. So we're going to pop some random course from the white uh, set. And remember that ordering doesn't matter here. All we need to do is just make sure that we can actually visit all of our courses. So we're going to pop a course from the white set and we're going to go into our DFS function. So we're going to say if not self dot DFS and to this DFS function, we're going to pass the course. We're going to pass the gray set and we're going to pass the black set. Now, what this function DFS is going to return is true if basically we can visit all of the children successfully and false if there's a cycle. So if this function ever returns false, that means that we have a cycle and we can simply stop there. This problem is not solvable. So if our DFS function returns false, obviously not false is going to be true. Um, so this is going to evaluate. So we simply return false here, right? Otherwise, we simply continue. And if we're able to process the entirety of the white set, which means that we're able to basically reach all of the nodes in our um, dependency graph, that means that we're able to take every single course and we're good to go. We can simply return true. Now what we want to do is actually define the DFS function. So let's define it. So we're going to say def DFS. We're going to pass um, self. We're going to pass the course that we're processing, the gray set and the black set. The first thing that we want to do is we are now visiting course course. So we want to add it to the gray set. So we're going to say gray dot add course, right? Because that indicates that we're processing it. If we now end up back at this course, then that means that we have a cycle and we can return false. So remember that, you know, we want to visit all of its children now. <clears throat> so, you know, for a course, we want to start visiting its prerequisites and we want to make sure that we can do that. So we're going to say for uh, prereq in so remember self dot graph uh, for that course we're going to say if that prereq is uh, sorry in, is in the black set then we can simply continue because remember the black set represents nodes that we have visited uh, entirely which means that we visited it and all of its children so if we've already visited that node um, in its entirely in its entirety sorry then we do not need to visit it again so we can simply just continue to the next uh, node in our kind of list here for that course now we also want to check whether or not the prerequisite is in the gray set so we're gonna say if prereq in gray then we're gonna be returning false here and the reason for that is remember the gray set represents courses that we're currently visiting. So if we're currently already visiting this prereq uh, as part of our DFS and we somehow end up at it again, that indicates a cycle. Therefore, we return false because obviously cycles mean that we cannot solve this problem. If both of those conditions don't fire, then what we want to do is we want to go on to just performing the DFS. So we're going to say if not self DFS and we're going to pass in the prereq this time. We're going to pass in the gray set and the black set. And remember, this function will return false if there's a cycle and true if there's no cycle. So if we get to this point here where there is a cycle, we want to return false. All right. The last thing we need to do is now that we have fully processed this course by going through the DFS here for all of its prerequisites, the last two things we need to do is actually remove the course from the gray set because it's now been fully processed. So we're going to say gray dot remove course and we're also going to say black dot add course because now it has been processed and all of its children have been fully processed. And since there was no uh, cycle detected, we can simply return true here and that's going to be it. So let's just run this, make sure we didn't make any typos anywhere and let's submit it. So whoops, let me just open this up and as we can see, it is successful. So Apologies for the cutout there. I accidentally, uh, when I first recorded the code, I said the wrong time and space complexity. So I just cut that part out and I'm going to redo it. So the time and space complexity here uh, is going to be your standard topological sort time uh, and space complexity. So the time here is going to be V plus E. So what does V plus E mean? So V is equal to the number of vertexes in the graph or the number of nodes and E equals to the number of edges in the graph or uh, connections between nodes, right? Obviously, you know, when we're traversing it, the amount of time it's going to take is, you know, the number of nodes uh, with the number of edges, right? If we have a really complex graph, that's going to take longer. 
So your time complexity for any topological sort problem is always big O of V plus E. And your space complexity for any sort of topological sort problem is going to be big O of V. So this um, essentially you're just storing in your graph the number of vertexes you have. Uh, so obviously the graph is going to depend on, you know, the number of courses you have. So that is going to be your time and space complexity. You can basically memorize this because it's going to be the same for any uh, topological sort algorithm. And remember that we chose to do this problem with topological sort because the follow up question course schedule two will actually want some sort of ordering of the courses. So like I said, why learn two algorithms when you can just learn one and they both work for this question and they work for other questions as well. I believe alien dictionary can be solved with the exact same code. So you get three problems for the price of one. I think that's pretty good value for your time. Uh, so that is going to be how you solve this question. Probably going to see course schedule two in the next coming days just because the code is literally the same. So it's really easy for me to just make both these videos. Anyway, I'm going to stop blabbing here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.